We all know Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr., but there are five others that have also gone completely unsung. Hi, this is Steve from College Express, and today we are looking at five black male figures that have gone completely unsung in history. Robert Sengstadt Abbott, or Robert Abbott for short, studied printing at Hampton Normal and Agricultural Institute, now known as Hampton University, one of the most famous historically black colleges. He would then go on to study law at Kent College in Chicago. But because of the racially prejudiced backgrounds going on at the time in Chicago, he was refused a job. So in 1905, he decided to go back into printing, which he decided to study in his undergrad, and he founded the Chicago Defender, one, probably one of the most notable and famous newspapers today. Back then, and in 1916, it only circulated to 50,000 people. But then in two years, it more than doubled to 125,000, and then easily over 200,000 in the early 1920s, making it the highest circulated black newspaper in the country. And it was also used to help open trade unions for black people, abolish lynching in Chicago, and much, much more. Because of all the success, Robert Abbott would then go on to become the first self-made millionaire of African-American descent. And a side note, Robert Abbott has actually appeared already in one of our videos. He was the lead financial supporter that helped Bessie Coleman attend flight school in France. Gordon Parks was a talented artist. He was a photographer, a pianist, a writer, and a painter. His talents were first recognized by a photography clerk who was developing his first role of film when he was very young, and he encouraged him to pursue photography. That pursuit of photography led him to become the first African American on staff at Life Magazine. He's been quoted to say, I saw that camera could be a weapon against poverty, against racism, against all sorts of wrongdoings. I knew at that point I had to have a camera. He then would go on to become the first black director and directed the movie Shaft, which basically saved MGM from bankruptcy and also led to a significant role in developing the blacksportation genre. Much like Bessie Coleman, Jesse Leroy Brown dreamed of becoming a pilot. And in 1948, after finishing basic training, he received his Naval Aviator badge, becoming the first black man to wear the wings of gold. He then tragically though would die in the Korean War, but he became a symbol of courage and admiration for the black community. At the young age of 16, Louis Latimer had to help support his family. He found a job at a local law firm in Chelsea, Massachusetts, where he found his talent for drafting and mechanical drawing by watching the draftsmen that worked there. And when his colleagues noticed his talent, he eventually got promoted. And this talent would also go on to have him discovered by the likes of Alexander Graham Bell, Hiram Maxim, and Thomas Edison. This talent would also get him hired as the first and only black inventor on Thomas Edison's team. A little known fact, Latimer actually worked to develop the filament system that made Edison's light bulbs cheaper and longer lasting. Where Edison gets all the credit for the light bulb, it was Latimer that helped him make it successful. Shortly after receiving his degree in law from Harvard University, William Henry Hastie became one of the first black members of President Franklin Roosevelt's administration. He would serve as his race relations advisor. And in 1937, Hastie was appointed judge of the Federal District Court of the Virgin Islands by that same president, effectively making him the nation's first federal black judge. He then would go on to become dean and professor of law at Howard University School of Law while serving as a civilian aide to the Secretary of War. And during that time there, he championed for racial integration to troops. But when the Army and the Air Force decided to create completely different training facilities for races, Hasty resigned his, from his position in an act of protest, which then prompted the Army and the Navy to begin limited experimentation with integrated troops. But Hasty didn't stop there. In 1946, he was appointed the governor of the Virgin Islands, and in 1950, he was confirmed as judge of the Third United States Circuit Court of Appeals. If you like this video, make sure to like and hit that subscribe button. Also, click the bell button if you want to know when the next video goes live for a notification.